Oh, Doctor. So many lives. So many adventures. Let's rank them. So earlier this month, I hit 50,000 subscribers, which was amazing. (laughs) That is a huge, huge milestone, and it means the absolute world to me. And I decided I needed to do something big, something special as a result of that. But what? I mean, what's the standard sort of thing? Q&A? My live streams every two weeks, basically just a free-for-all Q&A. How would that be special? Ah, that didn't work. Some people suggested, you know, reviewing something that people have been asking for. But the thing is, most of the thing that the bulk of people have been asking for, I have at least in some way addressed, if not here, then in the break room, or people have commissioned me to review stuff. That wasn't going to work either. I said, no, we're going to go big. We're going to go Possibly stupid. Possibly insane. We're going to rank every single episode of modern era Doctor Who. Not classic. Still haven't seen all of it. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Maybe in time for 100,000, I will have seen all the classic and then I can do this thing like for real, truly everything. But for right now, this is every single episode of modern era Doctor Who ranked a couple of things before i get started one these are going to be super brief explanations for their placement because i don't want this thing to be five hours long number two do not hold me to this ranking this is the order that i put them in for this video I am not going to come back and reference it when I do future rankings of anything more specific. So eventually when I rank Capaldi's episodes individually, if the episodes from his era are in a different order than they are here, tough. That's just what's going to happen. This is what happens when you have ADHD. I don't care about being consistent. My opinions change. My whims get indulged. It's going to be ever shifting. But today, having hit 50,000... This is what the list is going to be. I'm also going to go about it slightly odd. I'm not starting at the bottom. I'm not starting at the top. I'm starting in the middle. Because if I start with the worst, well, that stuff I can get worked up about. Go to the best. That stuff I can get worked up about. It's going to be a big lull in the middle. So we're going to start at the lull. I'm going to start with the two in the middle, which come in at ranked number 84 and 83. And then... We're going to alternate worst to best. So it'll be 84, 83, 85, 82, 86, 81. It'll make sense as we go about it. I hope so. Maybe it won't. Screw it. This is what I decide what I'm going to do. And I've gone on too long already. Let's do it. Number 84, The Ghost Monument. Number 83, Deep Breath. Thing is, even though this is dead metal, this doesn't mean that these are mediocre. These are ones that, for the most part, I actually like. Ghost Monument, good, fun adventure. I enjoy it. Deep Breath, solid start. Not one of the best, but it worked. Number 85, Planet of the Ood. I enjoy Donna, but there's a lot about this that feels a little undercooked. Number 82, Husbands of River Song. I love the back half of this. The front end is a little bit too much farcical stuff. Number 86, Rose. People hammer at me for this one, but I'm sorry. Outside of the dynamic specifically between the Doctor and Rose, I don't think there's much to this story. Number 81, Kerblam. Corker of a story. Really rollicking adventure. Uh, There's some iffy ethical things going on there in terms of where the Doctor lands. 87, listen, boy, do I wish I loved this one more, but the more I go back to it, the more I'm like, there's so many cracks in this thing, but dang, that opening monologue. Number 80, Waters of Mars. Some really good tension, some really good performances, but I feel in a lot of ways it's kind of overrated and I never really found it scary. 88, Curse of the Black Spot. Probably rank it higher than most people would. I have a soft spot for pirates. I'm not saying it's a great episode. I just have fun. Angels Take Manhattan. Falls apart logistically. Good emotional core. 89, Revolution of the Daleks. Good fun vibe. I enjoyed it, but there isn't a lot of substance. Number 78, Flesh and Stone. This is where I can point out that I am not going to be joining together two parters. I'm going to be ranking each part separately. So Flesh and Stone felt like a little bit of a letdown from the setup. Part of the resolution I just think is kind of cheap. 
Number 90, Partners in Crime. Boy, do I love seeing Donna with the Doctor again, but I, I don't care for the story. Number 77, Army of Ghosts. Very good setup, but not a lot to it outside of just being able to set up the next one. Number 91, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. It is a solid start. And that's kind of all I've got. Number 76, Ascension of the Cybermen. Some really interesting ideas going on with the Cybermen here. It did kind of hinge on the next part nailing it, though. Number 92, The Hungry Earth. Decent Silurian story. Pretty good tension in terms of the build-up to their reveal. Number 75, Hide. I am a sucker for a nice atmospheric ghost story type thing. This is that, and I do enjoy it. It's not exceptionally deep, but it's fun. Number 93, Cold Blood. Slightly below the first half because it's got a weird opening with the voiceover, but still good stuff. Number 74, The Sound of Drums. I'm still a little iffy on this sort of manic version of The Master, but this does a lot of interesting setup. Number 94, The Last of the Time Lords. It's a really cheap Jack Deus Ex Machina ending on this thing, and it's not great. Number 73, Pyramid at the End of the World. Fascinating setup. Really intriguing stuff. Makes you want the next half. Number 95, The Next Doctor pretty much rides on the character of Jackson Lake. I enjoy him a lot, but outside of that, it's fluff. Number 72, The End of Time Part 2. Back half of this is really drawn out. Still some solid stuff and some strong performances, though. Number 96, Rosa. It's not bad, but my feelings on this one are complicated and it just doesn't quite pull together for me number 71 poison sky some of the conflicts uh, are resolved a little anticlimactically but it's a good rollicking way to round out this two-parter number 97 the lodger i kind of like the dynamic between craig and the doctor but it's just a lark of an episode number 70 last christmas the tacked on way to keep clara around notwithstanding a really interesting mix of holiday cheer and horror 98 the girl who died some decent banter the rest of it is meh twice upon a time feels really unnecessary in a lot of ways but it does still really do a good job of finding the heart of the story it's telling number 99 voyage of the damned bloated as heck Still has some fun moments, though. The End of Time Part 1. I found the tension in this to be aces. And the ending? That was a brilliant cliffhanger. Number 100, Rise of the Cybermen. The entire first half of this feels pointless, given that the fact that it's the Cybermen is given away in the title, and then the rest of it is just fine. 67, The Witch is Familiar. Missy is great. The interaction between Davros and the Doctor is just gold it gets undercut by stuff that goes on later on but man that stuff's still real good 101 the age of steel it's just kind of a decent enough wrap up to what came before i really do love the music that is the score for the cybermen though the Sontaran stratagem great reintroduction to a classic era villain this is some really fun stuff 102 the beast below it really feels like the wrong place in the series to be doing this and it doesn't quite earn a lot of what it's going for Number 65, The Magician's Apprentice. That cold open, though. Holy crap. That is so good. Plus, I love the reintroduction of Missy and the Doctor in this. Love it all. Number 103, Daleks in Manhattan. Actually, some interesting setup. Terrible accents notwithstanding. But it is also one of those ones that was going to wholly depend on the second part. Number 64, Turn Left. I think better of this one now than I used to because, well, a lot of it feels sadly prescient, but still just not my favorite kind of story. Number 104, Boomtown. I actually really like the interactions between the Doctor and the one remaining Slitheen, but that's about the only real highlight of this. Number 63, Thin Ice. Really good job at firmly establishing the dynamic between Bill and the Doctor, and a surprisingly strong story besides. Number 105, Tooth and Claw. There are some moments in this that I absolutely adore, but the effects don't hold up worth a damn, and the story's kind of laughable. Number 62, Gridlock. I admit, I just have a soft spot for this. The pace, the adventure sense of it, and I just love the idea of taking a traffic jam and making it this epic. Number 106, The Woman Who Lived. Fascinating concept that is just not done justice by this story at all. Number 61, Robot of Sherwood. It's the banter. This is some of the best banter, and I have no shame in ranking it this high just for that. Number 107, A Christmas Carol. It's the most Christmassy Christmas episode that ever Christmased. That's kind of all I've got. 
Number 60, the Time of the Angels. Really good tension. I like some of the new ideas introduced into the idea of the angels. Number 108, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. I've actually got a soft spot for a lot of what's going on here, but I, I can't really defend it. Number 59, Smile. Again, really good establishing of Bill and the Doctor and the way she is different from other companions. And it's a pretty neat idea, and I've come to appreciate it more with more viewings. Number 109, The Bells of St. John. The introduction of the most boring version of Clara and no real proper justification for why the Doctor gets involved. Before the Flood, really good wrap-up. The look on the Fisher King is really neat. Some very cool timey wiminess but there's a couple of oddities about this episode that hold it back a bit. 110, Into the Dalek. Not bad so much as just not much beyond just what it is, which is a mashup of several previous storylines. Number 57, Flatline. Just a solid, tense adventure, and the inversion of the relationship between Clara and the other people there, which normally would have been the relationship between the Doctor and the other people, interesting. Number 111, Let's Kill Hitler. It's fun, and it's got a rollicking vibe, but it's a mess. Number 56, Fugitive of the Jadoon. A lot of this rides on Joe Martin, but man, does she command the screen. Number 112, The Shakespeare Code. Pretty good performance from the guy playing Shakespeare and some really good music, but other than that, it's just generic history set stuff. Number 55, The Fires of Pompeii. This one gains more weight over time, and I actually really appreciate the way this lays out how Donna makes the Doctor better. Number 113, The Zygon Inversion. Look, that uh, closing speech is amazing, But it overshadows absolutely everything else. A lot of what else is going on is not very well thought out or executed. Number 54, The Parting of Ways. A real good way to sum up Eccleston's time as the Doctor and give him a good final stand. Number 114, Unicorn and the Wasp. Again, some fun banter, nice setting. Donna's fun, but that's kind of it. It's just bland. Number 53, The Return of Doctor Mysterio. I put this so high because I like superheroes and I like what Doctor Who did with them. Number 115, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. I didn't dislike it, but you know what? I struggle to remember anything that went on in it. Number 52, The End of the World. This is a great way of bringing in all the insanity that Doctor Who promises for future episodes. Number 116, The Christmas Invasion. Picks up beautifully once Tennant comes out of his coma, but prior to that... Number 51, Spyfall Part 2. Largely carried by Sasha Dewan's master, but boy, does he really do a lot to carry this. Some neat visuals, too. Number 117, Cold War. Ice Warriors. Cold War era pun that... Duran Duran. That's it. Number 50, Under the Lake. So much great tension from those ghosts and the setup and the mystery around it. Oh, you drew me in. Number 118, Praxius. Plastics are bad. Yeah, I know. What else you got? Number 49, Smith and Jones. One of the best introductions for a new companion and really establishing right off the bat why the Doctor's drawn to her. Number 119, A Town Called Mercy. Cyborg in the Old West. Is there any more to that pitch? No, not really. Number 48, Girl in the Fireplace. Some really excellent moments. I think it's overrated in a lot of circles, but it is still real good. Number 120, Bad Wolf. I'm sorry, I hate the reality in game show parodies. I just hate them. Number 47, The Stolen Earth. Really good way to ramp up things to an epic level for the end of Series 4. Number 121, Time Heist. I'm a sucker for a heist, and I still didn't really connect too much with this. Number 46, The Haunting of Villa Diodati. I have some issues with some stuff that goes on towards the end, but man, the atmosphere on this and the tension is gold. Number 122, Night Terrors. Even as a parent, I still can't connect with this thing. Number 45, The Rebel Flesh. Setting up some interesting intrigue, questions of humanity and duplication, and where do we go from here? Hmm. Number 123, The Snowmen. I find this version of Clara more interesting than the real one, so th- 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 there's that. Number 44, Spyfall Part 1. Fast-paced, good fun, cliffhanger, mwah. Number 124, The Vampires of Venice. Really good music. Really good music. Number 43, The Pilot. Terrific introduction to the status quo of where the Doctor's at and introduction to Bill. Number 
Rowan 26, The Unquiet Dead, really setting the template for why I get bored by most of the historical set episodes for the modern era. Number 42, The Impossible Astronaut. Ooh, the intrigue. The Doctor's dead. What are these things that nobody can remember? You got me. Number 127, Aliens of London. Some really great moments, but they're pretty small, especially when compared to the farting aliens. Number 41, Death in Heaven. I think this is a really strong firm establishment of who Missy is and what her dynamic with the Doctor is. And I think the mission statement of who the Doctor is at the very end overrides all the problems for me. Number 128, the Empress of Mars. Ice Warriors getting the shaft again. Colonialism in space had some potential, but just none of it's here. Number 40, School Reunion. The return of Sarah Jane. Mr. Finch is the villain. Bring it on. Number 129, The Power of Three. Actually, really interesting idea with the Doctor being stranded and having to go the slow way and just waiting for time to pass, but it all falls apart at the end. Like, really bad. Number 39, Asylum of the Daleks. I think it's fun. I just have fun. Number 130, World War Three. Yeah, that about does it. Number 38, Dark Water. Intriguing, disturbing, and oh, the reveal of those Cybermen. Number 131, Victory of the Daleks. A lot of neat ideas, none of which live up to their potentials, and ultimately none of which meant anything later either, even though they were clearly meant to. Number 37, Utopia. I am the master. That's all. That's all you need to know. Number 132, Resolution. Neat idea for a specific kind of Dalek. A bit OP, though, and the family stuff didn't work. Number 36, The Satan Pit. The Doctor versus the Devil. How's that going to work? Quite well, as it turns out. Number 133, The Lie of the Land. Just, what? 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 Number 35, The God Complex. Turning a hotel into a labyrinth. The concept behind the way the Minotaur works. Oh, this is good stuff. Number 134, The Big Bang. It's not a story. It is an exercise in tying up plot threads. And Moffat going, look how clever I am. I can tie all these together. I don't care. Tell me an interesting story. Number 34, The Name of the Doctor. Now, see, that is an interesting story. Almost probably paid off Clara's whole nonsense, too. Number 135, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. I do like Madge, but like she's kind of all it's got. Number 33, The Almost People. I actually love the themings in this and the way that it came down on this particular conflict. It's good. Number 136, The Runaway Bride. Donna may be my favorite companion, but boy, is she insufferable in this. And the story ain't good besides. Number 32, Demons of the Punjab. An aspect of history that I think is not taught as thoroughly as it should be. And a really compelling story with a lot of heart. Number 137, The Crimson Horror. A lot of potential in the pitch that just... None of it lives up. What a waste of Diana Rigg. Number 31, Day of the Doctor. I may be wishing that they had done something more closely focused on John Hurt, but this still feels like a nice celebration. Number 138, The Caretaker. Jokes are lame, villains lame, whole thing's lame. Number 30, It Takes You Away. This is the kind of weirdness I want from Doctor Who all the time. Number 139, Planet of the Dead. Planet of the absolutely boring alien design and dull story number 29 extremist really good self-contained as a bonus sets up later stories that weren't as good but still number 140 42 that one parting of the doctor and martha that 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 was good number 28 day of the moon really cathartic way to beat the silence i and the whole thing uh, it's creepy it's tense filled i love it number 141 the time of the doctor It's trying to cram too much into one story, and the vibe does not match a regeneration story at all. It just doesn't. Number 27, the Pandorica opens. This is brilliant buildup and some stellar moments. I wish the payoff worked, but you know what? This still does. Number 142, Knock Knock. Kind of a dull setup, kind of dull characters, kind of a dull story. Number 26, Face the Raven. This would have been the perfect send-off for Clara, everything the consequences of her actions they come home to roost so to speak and it's powerful number 143 the zygon invasion this one doesn't have the amazing speech to save it number 25 oxygen intense dramatic atmospheric and i love the theming number 144 closing time whatever it was that worked about the doctor and craig before is not working anymore number 24 the doctor falls had this been the actual regeneration story this thing would be near the top it's still really good number 145 the rings of akaten i think it's pretty telling that i can't even tell you what goes on in the speech about memory 
Number 23, The Girl Who Waited. Wonderful performances in this one and really good emotional heart too. Number 146, The Witch Finders. It ain't interesting and they basically just have King James recite his own Wikipedia page. Number 22, Journey's End. A little self-indulgent? Maybe, but boy, felt like it earned it. Number 147, The Timeless Children. My issue with this is much less about canon messing with it and just why? 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 What? What's the point? What are we doing? Number 21, World Enough and Time. Killer opening, the death of a companion, and then the creeptastic way of doing the Cybermen. Yes. Number 148, The Doctor's Daughter. Maybe it's a two-parter with some room to breathe. It could have worked, but I have no investment in Jenny, and the conflict is stupid. Number 20, Amy's Choice. I like reality bending, and I love the Dream Lord. Number 149, Evolution of the Daleks. Whatever potential there was in Daleks Take Manhattan is pissed away here. Number 19, Doomsday. Rip roaring good time until it kicks you in the gut. Number 150, Father's Day. Super obvious solution for how this thing's going to be resolved and some of the most pointless, needless monsters in the history of Doctor Who. I still don't think it works. I'm sorry. Number 18, Can You Hear Me? Theming is everything on this one and I think it nails it. Number 151, The Battle of Ranscor of Kolos. There isn't even really a battle. That should tell you everything. Number 17, A Good Man Goes to War. Way to raise the doctor up and then bring him down and then inject the hope right back into it. Oh, yeah. Number 152, New Earth. Really lazy alien design. Bringing back a villain that had no business coming back. And just nothing really to recommend this. Number 16, The Doctor's Wife. Such a fun concept and a brilliant bunch of performances. Number 153, The Long Game. I like Simon Pegg in it, but he can't save this. Number 15, The Eleventh Hour. That is a stellar way to kick off not only a new series, but a new Doctor's era. Mwah. Number 154, Kill the Moon. Fails on logistical level, fails on thematic level. That's a double failure. Let's move on. Number 14, The Impossible Planet. The tension in this one is so well built up and the music's incredible. Number 155, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. Brilliant title and even a neat idea, but just a nothing of an episode. Number 13, Human Nature. Who could have thought that making the Doctor not even the Doctor anymore could be so compelling? Number 156, In the Force of the Night. It's bad in ways that are weird enough that you kind of tilt your head at it, but that's about all the novelty you'll get. You just get to see it a a little bit tilted. Number 12, Family of Blood. Such good resolution to what had been built up and such a strong ending. Chilling. Number 157, The Wedding of River Song. This is just too much going on. And it's, it's a garbled mess. This is a disaster of a finale. Number 11, Dalek. How do you reintroduce such iconic villains? You take one and only one and show everybody why they should be scared. Number 158, Nightmare in Silver. There's like maybe one good idea with the idea of the cyber controller trying to take over the doctor's brain, but that isn't even particularly well executed. So then there's just nothing but annoyance. Number 10, Blink. Dr. Light, done right. The Weeping Angels introduced so good. Number 159, Love and Monsters. I get what it was going for, and what it was going for was an interesting notion, but just none of the execution works. Number 9, Mummy on the Orient Express. My platonic ideal of a completely self-contained Doctor Who story. I love almost everything about this. Number 160, The Saranga Conundrum. Alien is not intimidating. Situation isn't interesting. Supporting characters aren't interesting. I got nothing. Number eight, Vincent and the Doctor. Such a good look at depression. Not only those who suffer it, but those who care about people who suffer it. It's touching, brilliant, wonderful. Number 161, Orphan 55. I appreciate the message it was going for, but it hammers it really badly and the structure doesn't work and the supporting cast is junk. Number seven, Silence in the Library. Be Afraid of the Dark, Introduce River Song. The library's frankly a brilliant setting. Oh, everything I like. Number 162, Hellbent. Look, the performers gave their all trying to make this thing work, but it's just a mess. It just is. Number six, The Night of the Doctor. Yes, I'm counting this as a short. No, I'm not counting any other shorts. This is the only one that deserves to be here. It is seven minutes of per. Perfection. Number 163, Arachnids in the UK. Giant Spiders is the kind of idea the writer scribbles out on a notepad when he's trying to leave his desk and go to lunch. And then you add a really terrible political satire character on top of that. Number five, 
the empty child. That thing scared the ever-living crap out of me. This introduces Jack Harkness. It's just great and creepy and funny in just the right ways. So good. Number 164, The Lazarus Experiment. The idea is kind of stupid and the effects... (laughs) Well, God, they really overreached. The structure's strange, too. Number four, Forest of the Dead. What happens to River and to Donna is heartbreaking. What happens at the end is triumphant and touching. This is the perfect emotional roller coaster. Number 165, Sleep No More. Absolutely pointless gimmick bolted onto a story that is not only uninteresting, but suffers from one of the stupidest monster concepts in the history of the show. Number three, Midnight. The doctor on his own when the one thing that is always what he can count on, his ability to keep talking, is the very thing that is going to make him lose. 166, Fear Her. This is probably the episode with the least good in it. I'm not sure there's anything that actually works in this. Number two, Heaven Sent. The doctor completely on his own, my favorite doctor, being put through the ringer in a way that twisted my heart and made it sink and then soar at the end. This is brilliant. And down at the bottom, number 167, the idiot's lantern. I may have said that Fear Her had the least good in it. That may be true, but this is one of the only episodes that I find actually, personally, Deeply, painfully, offensive. And if you don't know why, there's the review. Screw this episode. And number one, The Doctor Dances. Wonderful, amazing tension built up. How could they possibly win? And not only do they win, but everybody lives. I don't care if that sentiment got diluted by overuse later on. It is perfectly deployed here and maybe the single crowning achievement of the entire revived series of Doctor Who. Everybody lives! And I love this episode so much. And that is my ranking. From the bottom to the top, All 167 of what I wanted to consider things, given that I snuck one in there with Night of the Doctor. As I said, I am not standing by this list in future, but today this is what you get. What are your thoughts on it? Thank you again so much for 50,000 subscribers. The fact that this is my job is incredible, but that growth means the world to me. Whatever your thoughts are on this, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. You can support me on Patreon. There's a link down in the description. And that is what enables me to do this for a living. There's also YouTube memberships now if you want to support me that way as well. There's perks. Either way, it is greatly appreciated. If you are not in a position to be able to do that or simply don't want to, well, you know what? Like, share, subscribe. Those help me out and combat the dreaded algorithm. But I'm not going to hammer on you too hard for that either. Because, my friends, over 50,000 of you, you are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.